When I originally planned my maths casts on the simplification scheme for integration by parts, it was always my intention to do it in two maths casts. After I'd finished those two maths casts, it hit me that I hadn't actually covered one of the important integrands that is often dealt with by integration by parts. That's the integrand of the form polynomial in x multiplied by log x. Like this one, for instance, where I've got an nth power of x. When we approach this integral by conventional integration by parts formula, we, as usual, have to decide how to assign the u and the v primed. We learn there that the usual choice of u to be the power of x is not the best one here. In fact, to do this by integration by parts formula, we have to choose u equals log x and v primed equals x to the n. I'm not going to go firm further with the formula method, but rather I want to try and use my integration by parts scheme. Remember that what we have to do is put the u object in a left-hand column and then continually differentiate it, and the v primed object in the right-hand column and integrate it. Let's do that process at least once now. So when we differentiate log x, we get 1 over x. And integrating x to the n gives x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. At this stage, there are two observations we need to make. Differentiating 1 over x will turn it into negative 1 over x squared. And if we keep differentiating, the negative powers of x will just continue to get bigger. We will never reach 0. That means that if we are to get away with using our scheme here, it will have to take the form that we used in part 2 of the maths cast on this subject. The one where we stopped short and actually evaluated an integral at the end. Since I know in advance how it's going to work, I'm going to tell you that actually we've now got everything. We don't need to go further with our differentiation and integration. We can indicate that with just some dots that it would continue if we wanted. The other observation I need to make here is in the right-hand column. There's a danger there, isn't there? We're dividing by n plus 1. That means that this technique will have a problem if n is equal to negative 1. We should separate that case and say that we're not allowing it here. But incidentally, that draws to our attention that in fact n doesn't have to be integer at all. The x to the n doesn't even have to be a polynomial. It could be the square root of x, or x to the one-third, or x to the minus pi over 17. Any power of x will work here, apart from negative 1. OK, that's enough beating about the bush. Let's get on and apply our scheme. The scheme says, draw a diagonal line from top left to bottom right. In the earlier maths cast, I was drawing that line blue. If the left-hand column finishes with a zero, we just keep drawing those diagonal lines. Then we add everything up. If not, we have to do an integral at the end. That integration process I was indicating with horizontal red lines. Oh, and there's something I've almost forgotten again, but I did remember it this time. That's to alternate the signs, plus and minus next to the left-hand terms. Remember that doing that takes into account the minus in the integration by parts formula. So now we can write down an attempt at our integration by parts. Let's start with the top red line. That's the integral on the left-hand side. The integral of x to the n times log x. To evaluate the integral, we go down the blue diagonal line, and that gives us x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 log x. Then we multiply the terms in the bottom connected by the lower red horizontal line. That's minus 1 over x, and x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. When we've multiplied those, we put an integration sign in front. And now we see that this has paid off, because in that new integral there is no log term, and there are just powers of x that can be simplified. In fact, one power cancelling on top with the single x at the bottom. That just makes x to the n in the integral, and I've pulled the constant 1 over n plus 1 out to the front. I can now integrate that x to the n, 
and the process is finished. That's a perfectly good answer that I've written there, but some people would factorise various terms out and write it a bit differently. So, for example, we could write it like this. And remember, that works for any n other than negative 1. So, for example, the integral of the square root of x times log x would just have n equal to a half. It's easy enough to do that in the bottom formula. Just substitute n equals a half. Notice also that if n is 0, x to the 0 is 1, so then we just get the integral of log x. It's easy enough to substitute n equals 0 in the bottom, and this is the result. We're nearly done. Let's just deal with that exceptional case, n equals negative 1. It's done a different way. When n is negative 1, the integral we want to evaluate becomes the integral of 1 over x log x. We can't do it by parts, but we can do it by substitution, because look, 1 over x is exactly the derivative of log x. So let's make a substitution u equals log x. So in that case, du is 1 over x dx. And so our integral is just the integral of u du. And that's very simple. A half u squared plus c. Then we substitute u equals log x, and we get a half log x squared plus c. That just about covers everything I need to say about log. I'd like to finish with an example involving a couple of powers of x. Something like this. It looks a bit awful, doesn't it? But actually, it simply succumbs to the scheme process using the table that we outlined above, and in one step as well. Put the u, that's the log x, on the left, and the powers of x on the right. Integrate the right-hand side and differentiate the left-hand side. That's what it looks like. Put in the alternating plus or minus, and the blue diagonal line, and the red horizontal lines. R write out what this means, remembering that the red line is an integration, and the blue line is just a product. As usual, that gives us a fully integrated piece, and a new integral to do, which, however, we can do. Take the 1 over x inside the brackets, and cancel some powers. There, I've done that by deleting and changing. Now I just have to do that last integral, which is easy. And the integral's finished. I'm going to stop there.